right, so now we have these new lights in Olds Cove. The new rail road crossing is almost commissioned. The boys are still working on them. The old crossing and the old road will be removed, and this is the new approach. Um, and there are three sets of loops. So three loops for the stop sign approach, and three loops for the yield approach. And we have a set of Q-cutter traffic signals, which are a first in Nova Scotia. Um, the whole area is going to be fully lit with these new highway lights. Um, and this is a preemption driven and uh, detection driven intersection. Um, the intersection up at the highway is stop sign controlled. Uh, did not warrant a full intersection, a full signalized intersection. So. Right now I have them in dark, uh, so motorists don't get confused during the flagging. And we have the Pelco Aeroflex uh, backboards uh, due to the high wind loading in this area. Uh, we, have, we don't typically have backboards on our secondaries, but this is kind of a special signal. We want them to be as seen as possible. Um, we have a Wavetronics here that detects cars at the stop bar. Uh, this also runs red rest at night to slow motorists. Um, and it also ensures that if traffic starts to queue up past the stop bar before the tracks, it will force off the lights and turn them red for a determined amount of time. And then they'll go back to green and operate like a um, ramp meter. Um, if they are, if this car is backed up on the loops, they can indefinitely hold in red while traffic is gridlocked. Um, the detectors will go into a fail-safe condition after about seven, five to seven minutes, and it will throw the lights into preemption three, which will set them in flashing yellow. Um, essentially, flashing yellow means a failed detector condition. So if there's an open loop or anything like that, uh, the lights are essentially rendered useless, so they just go into flashing yellow. Uh, they will still work because preemption one and two are overrides and they will um, always be priority, so they'll still operate normally with a preemption condition when the train is here, but if the detectors fail, then it will go into uh, flashing yellow. So people just have to proceed with caution. Um, we also have an advanced warning sign on the other side of the tracks, which we'll go check out. Um, so yeah, these lights are in red right now because the rail company has them in a preempt condition. So we only have, so it's phase eight is what they had. And then I'm using load switch 12, which of course one is a head eight. Um, but also because they, I don't want the advanced warning to be in flash when the lights are in flash, the only condition that they're flashing is during preemption one and two, the rail. Um, other than that, it's just dark. So I have field check, but red fail is actually disabled. So you can actually remove the load switch, but if the wires get damaged, it will put it into flash. Um, and there's no conflicts that are compatible with each other. There's no other phases. Uh, a little bit overkill for what we're doing. Um, it also has battery backup. Um, so we have, a, have it set to auto. So here's our loops, and they correspond with uh, ABC, DEF. Um, ABC being the right turn channel, DEF being the stop sign approach. And uh, when cars back up on the further two loops, and then a car enters the furthest loop, or closest loop to myself, then the lights will force off and uh, hold in phase nine, which is kind of my ghost phase. And then basically if uh, the further two loops have emptied or the further loop is emptied, then it will go back to green and cars can uh, continue as normal. Um, and then I, so, and then I, can, I have my switches set up, so the PET switches essentially have become preempt test switches, rewritten, rewritten with logic. Are just the test detectors. Um, and then, so we can have hit three, but it drops uh, because if it's in a failed condition, it will hold the call. But because I, I don't have this as a locked call, um, I have my 
proper delays on the detectors. Everything is operating as it should. The detector matrix sensor has been updated to latest firmware. And we don't use loops new very often, but in this situation we did. Uh, we got our UPS. We have our UPS cabinet. We don't do Pullman a whole lot either, so. Take a look at the advanced warning sign. Um, so yeah, we'll be back in a sec. So here, this is this one's hooked up. Actually, putting in mechanical bells, brand new, which is pretty cool. There's the new hush. There's the new gantry with all the lights. Those are the old. That's the old hush and the old uh, beacons and bells that are going to be decommissioned. Uh, we're still waiting for a new highway light to go here. Um, yeah, there's a lot of flagging, so traffic is a little messy right now. That signpost is going to be moved. This will become like a proper four-way intersection, I guess. And then we got this kind of uh, flimsy, well, I say it's kind of flimsy looking, but we'll see how long it lasts. But wooden signpost with some beacons on it. right turn channel uh, just because the rail kind of sneaks up on them where if you're coming from the left side from over here you can kind of see the lights right away and it doesn't really require advanced warning but that one's kind of coming off of a high speed slip lane where this road here is going to disappear and it's just warning drivers that the lights are active so there you go alright so here's the back of the back plates there's the actually black on the back of them typically we go with all yellow but I have the reflective tape on the front which is still the correct amount of tape for visibility on or like approaching vehicles so the gates up now so the lights are actually back in green and they'll just rest in green during the day plan uh, until the night plan starts at like 11 and then it goes into red rest and then when cars approach the stop bar, they'll immediately turn green. Okay, so the gate's up right now, so the lights are still flashing, but that doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the preemption. So yeah, that's back to what it was. And the flashing logic flag is for the advance warning sign over there. Um, and it will only activate during the preemption one two. And then we have our test button. And then of course I have my test switches on the cabinet. Um, and then yeah, just like I said, I just wrote the logic for it. Um, three. Okay. So yeah, I got like logic for like these detectors here all have to be on to turn that flag on, and that has to turn. So basically for the left turn lane and the right lane. And then I have if one or two or four is on, um, it will basically call phase nine, which is the ghost phase. Uh, and then when phase nine is on, we set logic flag three on. And then if basically any of these flags or 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 and three is on, then you have to hold nine on. Otherwise, hold it off. Don't hold it on. Uh, and then basically if seven or eight is on, which is the matrix sensor, and they're not in fail, then four, logic flight four comes on, um, and then basically if seven or eight is in fail safe, or detector eight is off, shut flag four off, which will uh, take it out of the uh, ramp meter uh, condition. Um, and then if, and then, oh, this is the other condition that shuts off the flag four, which is flag four has to be on, and phase time, Face timing nine has to be on, then delay for 10 seconds shuts off. Uh, and then that's the 
flash logic for load switch 12. And then four seconds on and off. Um, and then of course there's the preempt one and preempt two off. And then it sets the overlaps off if the preempts are off. And then here is the fail safe. So this is only for the loop, so the matrix sensor can be in fail safe and it doesn't matter. Um, because it doesn't render the intersection useless, but if any of these detectors, like, um, for the loops go bad, then the cue cutter becomes useless, and then, but at least it will get us focused on if there's an issue, we can go repair it right away, and then delays for 10 seconds, turns flag 6 on, which calls preemption 3, which does a load switch flashing well. Two is on, shuts all these logic loops off because that overrides everything. And then that's if one and two are off, or three is off, shuts flag one off, and then four and five or six. Uh, and then if the vent plane is two, which is the night plane, and then if detector seven is off, and eight is off, and the preemption is off, then flag seven comes on, which is the red rest logic. And then a flag one, two, one and two is off, and three is on. Vent plan two, that's, uh, that will shut flag three off. Which is actually on five, four. Oh yeah, for phase timing nine, that's right. So phase, phase timing nine has 30 on. Um, but it can shut it off. This is the detector pedestrian logic uh, that basically just calls preemption sequences instead for test purposes. Uh, and then if event plan 9 is on and event plan is 2, which is the night plan, so event, so if, if phase timing 9 is on, it, had, it just basically calls 8 before it goes back into a red rest. And I think that's all the logic I have. I might actually, oops, 24, so I'm actually going to go to 20, copy that from 23, and I'm going to disable that one, and then go 22, 23, and I'm going to copy that from 22, and I'm going to go detection event 8, call preemption sequence 4, which I don't have, so, but it's there in case I ever set it up for any reason, but it's there, it's disabled, it's off, whatever, it doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, and then that one's, that one's gonna be the final logic statement I have instead. Um, yeah, and it just starts in green, pretty basic setup, um, yeah. Um, so if I run, oh, look at that, we're starting to get some uh, more lights on this, but I'm gonna run the preemption sequence. Test one, so we're gonna zoom out here so you'll see the lights are green, and then they're gonna to go to yellow, and then they're gonna to go to red, and it's gonna dwell for 10 seconds. Oh look, they got their lights on, that's good. And then after it drops out, it will go back to green. And then we'll hold it green, but right now their preemption is off, uh, so it's not actually doing anything. Oh, actually, no, it's, got, it's gonna fire up now because they're I just heard the relays click. So now it's going to hold itself in red. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now they're getting their, all their lights and everything hooked up on their gates. Which looks really nice. This should be open pretty soon as well. just so they don't get confused and stop. I know they will. They're not going to know what to do with the set of lights down this way. Oh yeah, everything's aimed properly. Everything looks good. Um, so once the road opens, I'll 
watch it operate for a bit, make sure everything is hunky-dory, and then I will be safe to sign off on that. Yes, yeah, so I got the bells off right now, so it'll be nice to hear the mechanical bells. Instead of the, yeah, they didn't go with e-bells, which is interesting, so I think it's all safe. I think it's all safe, Tran. Thank uh -huh.